गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल मॉलिकुलर मिस्ट्रीज होप एवरी वन इज डूइंग फाइन आउट देयर सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स गेट इन टू द क्लास Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my class. So, in the last class, we have discussed about the metabolic pathways, and today I want to discuss about the new important metabolic pathway named the gluconeogenesis. Okay. So, what is gluconeogenesis, and why is it called that way? Let's discuss in this class. So, the name itself says that gluco. Gluco means glucose. Neo means new. Genesis is production, which means the new glucose production. so you already know that whatever we take inside is has to be converted into glucose right what it would be a polysaccharide it could be a disaccharide whatever it is they have to be converted into simple sugars for digestion and energy production so that normally happens in the body but why gluconeogenesis is important so as you have already gone through the thumbnail itself says that what is the importance of fasting what happens during fasting so how uh, how the body Uh, function during the fasting conditions or starvation during starvation okay let's now discuss so what happens during starvation you all know that the glucose levels in the body would be reduced because there is no consumption of any food items uh, the blood level glucose would be under uh, uh, under normal uh, uh, less than the normal conditions right so what happens let's discuss in this class so gluconeogenesis is the new glucose that is produced from the non carbohydrate precursors like i told you generally a carbohydrates are broken down for glucose but i am talking about the non carbohydrate source what are those sources let's discuss okay so i so i told you the synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate sources is called gluconeogenesis so the daily requirement for a human being of glucose is only 120 grams per day and if that person is fasting for that day the stored form of glucose called glycogen in the liver would immediately get converted and would help the body for the glucose activities to be done because so because uh, the glycogen that is produced for one day would be around 190 grams would be equally sufficient for the daily requirement it would immediately you know uh, it it can level up with your uh, the daily requirement of glucose but if the starvation continues for one or two days more then what would be happen let's discuss because not only this glycogen even the glycogen levels could also get depleted when the person stays starvated for more days so what happens at that conditions and what are the sources of uh, glucose from where else the body can get uh, converted into glucose let's discuss in this class which is nothing but called the gluconeogenesis okay so this gluconeogenesis happens in the cytoplasm but there are some enzymes that are present only in the mitochondria which would regularize this gluconeogenesis okay and you should be pretty well know that the glucose sorry glycolysis and uh, gluconeogenesis all reversible in direction like uh, they are controlled in a uh, erect pattern like it should be in a controlled correct pattern so uh, if one is active the other will be in inactive stage so that is how they are regularized in a cell okay so before i enter into the gluconeogenesis you should be well aware of the cycles of krebs cycle and glycolysis because um, the glycolysis would help you what are the steps involved and the krebs cycle will tell you what other sources of glucose would be entering into the krebs cycle to get converted into the phosphoenol pyruvate okay so if you are having any doubts regarding the glycolysis and krebs cycle i have also posted the links that i have, i have taken the class and you please go through it you will come to know what are the steps involved in glycolysis and krebs cycle okay hope you are thorough enough with all the steps of both the cycles then only we are we will be you know uh, ready for understanding the mechanism of gluconeogenesis okay this gluconeogenesis mainly happens in the liver cells and a part like 20% would happen in the kidney cells also okay because this glucose is a direct fuel for the uh, rpcs and the brain so for brain to function well and for the uh, uh, rpc to function well glucose has to be there as an immediate fuel so for that metabolic activities this glucose has to be produced 
day by day during starving conditions okay so let's see what are the steps involved in it so what are the sources of glucose i told you non carbohydrate sources so non carbohydrate sources like lactate amino acids glycerol pyruvate and propionate these are the sources from where everything gets converted into the glycolysis uh, sorry uh, glucose okay so if you re remember the steps of glycolysis that starts with glucose and ends with the two molecules of pyruvate glucose is a six carbon compound that ends with the two molecules of three carbon compound pyruvate right and here the whole glycolysis is controlled or regulated by three important enzymes that i have already discussed so those enzymes mainly catalyze the irreversible reactions right those irreversible reactions called hexokinase catalyzed by hexokinase phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase these are the three important steps regulated in glycolysis so what happens is these three cycles like depend upon the presence of uh, uh, essentiality of your energy atp or not if atp is present more then glycolysis has to be shut in shut it down right you have already seen that how the whole enzymes regulate your glycolysis cycle okay so here what i am talking is the three important enzymes that are irreversible can be made reversible okay the phosphofructokinase activity the pyruvate kinase activity and the hexokinase activity can be made reversible instead of irreversible in glycolysis can be made reversible only during the starving conditions only during um, the fasting conditions these three enzymes which category which always go for a irreversible reaction are made reversible so that the pyruvate can be converted into the glucose molecules so hope you got an idea that the gluconeogenesis happens where the pyruvate is converted into glucose with the help of the three different enzymes which are only activated during the fasting conditions okay so let's go uh, in the last i will draw the whole cycle for your understanding because uh, it's an important mechanism where the enzymes are also involved what are the names of the enzymes where are they present i will also let you know in detail in the last slide where i will draw everything in detail okay so let me tell you the lactate which is also formed from the skeletal muscle okay will enter into the pyruvate through the enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase so and this pyruvate again goes with the cycle where glycerol, uh, uh, glucose is present in the same way the amino acids that are present from the diet would also be entering into the skeletal muscle where it again goes for your gly gluconeogenesis in the same way you know that glycerol in, in the last class i told you about the beta oxidation pathway where glycerol contains three fatty acid chains forming triacyl glycerol right this triacyl glycerol gets broken down forming the glycerol and this glycerol would enter into your uh, uh, glycolysis cycle either in the form of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or dihydroxy acetone phosphate there they can join it so it goes back to your glucose mechanism production okay so and that is one form and also uh, one more important is propionate see this propionate first of all gets converted into succinyl coa so this succinyl coa you will come across in krebs cycle where succinyl coa is considered to be the intermediate compound that would get converted into oxaloacetate and this oxaloacetate again enters into gets converted into pyruvate uh, sorry uh, phosphoenol pyruvate this oxaloacetate get converted into uh, phosphoenol pyruvate with carboxylase enzyme so Uh, the main important enzymes for gluconeogenesis are two important enzymes i will let you know what are those two so this is what i'm talking about these are the main steps in gluconeogenesis so as i told you the pyruvate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with an intermediate called oxaloacetate see what happens is this oxaloacetate uh, is present in mitochondria once pyruvate is converted into oxaloacetate this oxaloacetate again enters into the cytoplasm and this with the enzyme called as phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase so these are the two enzymes involved are pyruvate carboxylase and phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase these are the two important enzymes in gluconeogenesis please remember okay this pyruvate carboxylase is present in the mitochondria which helps with the conversion of the pyruvate into oxaloacetate 
this oxaloacetate after leaving the mitochondria would enter into the cytoplasm and gets converted into phosphoenol pyruvate with an enzyme called phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase okay this particular enzyme pep carboxykinase phosphoenol pyruv uh, pyruvate carboxykinase is present in the cytoplasm of the cell whereas the pyruvate carboxylase is an enzyme that is present in the mitochondria so hope you got the first idea about the gluconeogenesis okay from back from pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate now the other irreversible is made reversible during fasting is the conversion of fructose 16 bisphosphate to fructose 6 bisphosphate sorry fructose 6 phosphate this is enzyme is uh, is catalyzed by you all know that it's phosphofructokinase so it is a most uh, you can say it's a most uh, uh, important enzyme which regulates the glycolysis right so this is made into a reversible reaction forming fructose 6 phosphate from fructose 16 phosphate only during the starvation conditions thus you got your fructose 6 phosphate here and this fructose 6 phosphate you know if you go back in the backward direction of your glycolysis this fructose gets isomerized with glucose 6 and again glucose gets converted glucose 6 converts into glucose so if you go for a rewind of your cycle in the backward direction the fructose 16 gets converted into fructose 6 fructose 6 converts into glucose 6 and glucose 6 converts into glucose so that is how these are the steps involved and this is the phosphofructokinase that catalyzes the enzyme for the conversion of fructose 16 into fructose 6 and now you got uh, i told you fructose 6 phosphate is easily isomerized with glucose 6 phosphate and again this glucose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose plus an inorganic phosphate and, and one more important thing i want to say is all the cycles end with gluconeogenesis by glucose 6 phosphate only like the the end product of your uh, gluconeogenesis is glucose 6 phosphate Uh, it would be an advantage for the cell because glucose 6 phosphate is a uh, phosphorylation of that particular glucose won't allow the glucose molecule to go outside of the cell it would be a helpful advantage for the uh, cell to maintain it in a glucose 6 phosphate only rather than the glucose free molecule because if it is made glucose if 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 you if the body again needs for the breakdown of glucose again it has to trap the glucose and phosphorylate it instead of it if the glucose 6 phosphate is play, is uh, saved in the cell in the form of the same without converting into glucose then then it can be used for the further uses if if, if demands for uh, atp production this can be broken down again glycolysis again runs down so the gluconeogenesis ends with glucose 6 phosphate rather than the glucose okay it, uh, it would be better for the cell to be in a glucose 6 phosphate only then only it depends upon the energy requirements if either they have to go for uh, glycolysis or they have to continue being like a glucose 6 phosphate okay so these are the important steps of gluconeogenesis so i told the gluconeogenesis and glycolysis are reciprocally regulated when one pathway is relatively inactive while the other is highly active okay the rate of glycolysis is also determined by the concentration of glucose and the rate of gluconeogenesis is determined by the concentration of lactate i told you lactate is one of the important precursors for your uh glucose production okay in the ground rule that i want to uh, summarize is the glycolysis will be predominated when energy is required okay when there is large amount of energy then the gluconeogenesis will be taking over that place so these are reciprocally regulated so before i end up the topic i really want to give you a brief idea about the whole cycle okay because um it is important that you should be aware of all the enzymes so instead of discussing it in a theoretical way i want to uh, draw the diagram so that it would be clear for you hope i am clear right so let's in a normal way let's starts with glucose converted into glucose 6 phosphate okay and glucose 6 phosphate is converted into this i am drawing the glycolysis and then i will let you know what happens in gluconeogenesis so glucose is converted into fructose 6 phosphate by the enzyme isomerase you all know that and this is converted into fructose 16 bisphosphate right so with a series of reactions i am just drawing you will get phosphoenol pyruvate i am just 
writing it in a short form so that you know the space is occupying what right phosphoenol pyruvate and converted into pyruvate okay hope you got an idea so this is uh, catalyzed by if you remember it is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase okay and this important step is <clears throat> it catalyzed by hexokinase this important step for the conversion of fructose 6 into fructose 16 bisphosphate is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase hope you got an idea right these are the basic steps of your glycolysis and now so i told you the you got the pyruvate one second so here you got the pyruvate and this pyruvate has to enter into your mitochondria where it gets converted into oxaloacetate okay and this oxaloacetate okay once it enters into the mitochondria so this is your mitochondria i want to tell this is your mitochondria i have just drawn remember okay okay this pyruvate enters into the mitochondria where it is converted into oxaloacetate by then enzyme i told you it's a carboxylase it is present here in mitochondria okay that is the enzyme here and here what happens is before uh, the pyruvate getting converted into oxaloacetate it gets an intermediate compound called as malate which happens in the mitochondria itself okay uh, after the malate gets reduced by malate dehydrogenase it will enter in it will form the oxaloacetate once formed oxaloacetate in the mitochondria now enters into the cytoplasm okay this oxaloacetate that is entered into okay uh, cytoplasm now enters into gets converted into phosphopyranol pyruvate by pep carboxykinase so these are the two important enzymes for the gluconeogenesis this is present in the cytoplasm and this pyruvate carboxylase is present in your mitochondria so you got how so how you got to know how the pyruvate is converted back into pep and you know this is also made reversible by fructose 16 bis phosphatases they are phosphatases mainly act upon the phosphate group and they will break it down right so the uh, fructose 16 phosphate phosphatase would act on fructose 16 phosphate phosphate forming a fructose 6 phosphate and this glucose 6 phosphate again converts into glucose by glucose 6 phosphatase these are all actually the uh, uh, they, are, they are all irreversible steps in glycolysis but the situation demands like when it is starved conditions or when it is uh, when you are in need of glucose these three steps are made reversible making the formation of glucose at the end for your body needs okay so i to already told you how the pyruvate is converted so pyruvate is done let's talk about the lactate so i told you lactate is an uh, produced in the skeletal muscle right this lactate now enters from the skeletal material is converted into pyruvate by lactate dehydrogenase so your lactate is also entering into a gluconeogenesis cycle so this is is again going back right in the same way so pyruvate is done lactate is there so let's talk about the glycerol so glycerol are nothing but the fatty fats like the stored thing like uh, glycerols are stored in the form of triacylglycerol and this upon hydrolysis you will get fatty acids and glycerol and this glycerol first of all gets converted either into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or it may get converted into dhap okay 
and this DHAP or this would enter into the fructose 1, 6 this phosphate and again making the cycle to happen for the glucose production. So, one pyruvate is converted, second lactate is also converted into uh, pyruvate and also the glycerol would uh, accompany the step here in fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Now, we are left with propionate. So, this propionate is converted into, I will tell you about here. This propionate first converts itself into the succinyl CoA. This succinyl CoA is an intermediate compound in Krebs cycle, right? This succinyl CoA would get converted into oxaloacetate. This is only the Krebs cycle I am talking about. Okay, in the Krebs cycle, this succinyl CoA gets converted into oxaloacetate. Again, this oxaloacetate uh, goes out of the mitochondria and enters into cytoplasm with the help of PEP carboxykinase. It's converted into phosphonyl pyruvate, and thus the whole makes it's a reversible reaction forming the glucose product or the glucose 6 phosphate as the end product in your gluconeogenesis. So, hope you got an idea about how the all non carbohydrate sources like pyruvate, lactate, glycerol, pyropionate, all these things are converted uh, when body really need glucose. So, these are all the non carbohydrate think you I hope you got a clear idea about uh, uh, what are the important steps in gluconeogenesis okay so hope I am clear with everything please notify that all the enzymes involved in all the metabolic pathways have to be mem memorized like it should be uh, uh, you should have an idea about it what are the group of enzymes if you want uh, I can let you know the types of enzymes and what are the classes of enzymes also please comment me in the comment box whatever that you need to know about all these metabolic pathways okay so I have also attached the important uh, mm, the pathway mechanism in the uh, description box so I have also attached the glycolysis pathway and the Krebs cycle pathway for your easy understanding in the uh, um, description box please go through it and get to know better okay so hope you are uh, hope you like the class see you in the next video so thank you and have a nice day see you in the next class until then stay positive stay healthy and be kind to everyone thank you bye bye